All right, let's start by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadas. That's Yahweh, be the true name of our Heavenly Father in Hebrew. Yahweh Shai, be the true name of our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakadas. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Honors to the brothers pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. So we back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, on this lesson, we're going to get on Esau. But before we get started, I got a video clip I'm going to let roll. Bro, this is fucking insane. Bro, you hear in the middle of fucking 360. Oh my God. Holy shit. This is fucking nuts, man. Now we're going to let this roll one more time. And of course it's the Edomite doing this behavior, but let's continue. Bro, this is fucking insane. Right here in the middle of fucking 360. Oh my God. Holy shit. This is fucking nuts, man. Now, I wanted to do a lesson on, on this because last week, I had my cousin drive me off somewhere, and we was going on the highway. You know, the highway out here in Texas, you know, 70 miles per hour. It's not much of a shoulder of the road, so there's really no room for nobody to be walking. But on the highway, while we driving, going like 75 to 80, we see an Edomite, naked halfway running and limping down the highway. We see a naked Edomite limping and running down the highway. Now keep in mind, it's not much of a shoulder on the road. So I'm pretty sure that Edomite got hit by a car. But anyways, he, she couldn't tell what it was. Everything looks confusing these days. But it was an Edomite, butt naked, walking down the highway like a zombie. <clears throat> like he was kind of staggering, but looked like he was trying to halfway run, but sort of limping, but walking down the highway next to cars that's doing 75 to 85 miles per hour. <clears throat> and it was all of a sudden, so I couldn't get a video on it. I'm like, man, I need to do a lesson on that. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, my cousin sent me this video over here, my same cousin that was dropping me off. I'm like, what, what, ain't, ain't no coincidence that I saw this naked Edomite with him, that, that he's sending me a video again. The Lord had that set up so I can do a lesson on it. But these Edomites are finished. And the people watching this, this might be something we marvel at, but this is really not something to marvel at. This is really nothing new in the earth. The Lord done this to these Edomites. And... Before we get started, let me turn back on the scriptures. Because the Lord did this to Esau before. But before we get started, we're going uh, <clears throat> to get Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Now, this is going into the curses of Deuteronomy, the curses that, that, will, that will be put on the children of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Now, let's read it. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. <clears throat> so again, it will become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. What's an astonishment? You know, people marvel when they see the stuff we do, when they see us in this lower state. For example, in some major cities, white people will take tour buses through the ghettos and through the hoods and look at the Negroes like they looking at animals in the safari. Talking about look at them in their natural habitat. That's us being an astonishment. Or anytime you see us on TV, we got our women shaking their behind. Our men can halfway talk, ain't got no good language skills, 
rapping, talking about violence, that's us being an astonishment. When people see us doing something ignorant, people are not even surprised no more because we've been in an astonishment to the world for so long. What's a proverb? A proverb is a saying that appears to be true. Like, oh, he a black man, he don't he he must not have a job. He probably be selling drugs. Oh, you black, you probably didn't grow up with your father. Oh, another man got shot by the police, he must have been black. Oh, the police harassed somebody, he must have been a black man. That that's a proverb, it's something that appears to be true. Oh, he loved fried chicken, he must be black. You know? And some of that stuff is halfway true because it's the curses of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> now, what's a byword? A byword is a racial slur. It's a degrading name. It's names that people give us that the Most High didn't give us. Like the Lord called us an Israelite. He called us Hebrews. And for like the Negroes, we would be the tribe of Judah. The Native Americans would be Gad. The Mexicans would be Issachar. So a byword is any name or any word that people cause us that's outside of our God-given nationality. The Lord gave us the name Hebrew and Israelite and Judah and Gad. So being called by anything else would be disrespect to the Most High. So being called a colored, a black, an African-American, those are bywords. That's not what the Lord called us. That's pretty much saying screw the most high f what he called you i'm gonna call you what i want to call you so anytime we go by african-american or i identify as black or mexican or negro that's a byword because we are the children of israel we are hebrews from the 12 tribes of israel so and these are curses but when we go to deuteronomy 30 and 7 it reads, and Yahweh, thy God, will put all these curses upon thy enemies. So Deuteronomy 28 and 37, this was just one of the curses. The curses span from verse 15 to verse 68. So all those curses would eventually be put on our enemies as we come back to the Lord and wake up to who we are as a people. And the Lord Yahweh will put the curses on thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. Who persecutes us the most? It's the white man Esau. Who hates us the most? It's the white man, the Edomites. So the Lord is taking these curses and reversing them. The Lord pulled the he pulled out a reverse card, like in the game of Uno. Now the curses is going to these Edomites. For an example, this is an astonishment. Hold on. For an example, when we look at this video, this will be an astonishment. Like, dang, this Edomite taking their clothes off in the middle of downtown in the road. That's them being an astonishment. Every time they shoot up a school or shoot up a supermarket, it's a white man. That's them being an astonishment. Every time we see them poor, that's them being an astonishment. The Lord is taking them curses and putting them on Esau. And what's the proverb? Like we say, it's a saying that appears to be true. It's a saying that appears to be true. Like for example, oh, somebody shot up a school, somebody shot up a Walmart, or oh, he must have been white. Oh, it's a school shooter, it must have been a middle-aged, angry white man. Those are proverbs, sayings that appear to be true. Or oh, for example, oh, somebody strung out on opioids, somebody overdosed on antidepressants, overdosed on Xanax. Oh, it must have been a white dude. It must have been somebody white. Those are proverbs and they are true. Or for example, oh, he a white man, he probably got a small penis. That's why he angry. It's something that appears to be true. A white white people having small penises, that's a that's a proverb. So the Lord is putting his own astonishments and proverbs on the on the Edomites. What's the byword? You got bywords like cracker, school shooter. You know, do my words that's associated with the white race. And what else? Caveman, redneck. And what's another proverb that appears to be true? Oh, they some hillbillies out there in North Carolina. They must be practicing incest. We know incest is something that's associated 
with the white race, them having babies with close family members. And again, Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord, Yahweh will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. So that's why we see white people sinking lower and lower in society. That's why they not at the top as they used to be. We see them homeless. We see them living under bridges. That's why in 2020 to present day, you see more homeless white people now. You see more homeless white people than you ever have before. And now I was talking to an older Edomite at the gas station. He was like, yeah, you look like you're doing good for yourself. This is to not keep up the good work. And then he said that one time he was somewhere. It was like three homeless people, you know, that didn't have no way. And he said the bad thing about it, they was all white. Yeah, that's the Lord doing that to y'all. He's taking y'all from that high estate of being above everybody. And he's bringing them below everybody. And that's why we see them doing this sort of behavior. So for them to just take off their clothes and be walking naked in the middle of traffic, they're on some type of new drug or they got some type of virus or mental illness going on. Or that's just the most high turning them back to animals, which we're going to get to towards the end of the lesson. But yeah, the astonishments, the proverbs and the bywords, the Lord is taking them curses and putting them on our enemies, beginning with Esau. And what's, a, what's another proverb? Oh, all white people like to eat bloody meat. They eat undercooked meat. They don't season their food. They rape animals. Those are proverbs. We had our own proverbs and bywords. Now Esau is developing his own proverbs and bywords. And that's why when we hit Jeremiah 49 and 7, it reads concerning Edom. We know who Edom is. This is concerning the, concerning the white race. Thus says the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in teeming? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Teeming is, is, is either a son or a grandson of Esau. So when you say teeming, you're really talking about Edom. Like, for example, sometimes in the scriptures, we, say, we see the word Judah. Judah is the son of Jacob, but it usually concerns all of Israel. Just like we see Teman concerning all of Edom. So again, concerning Edom, thus says the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Teman? So is wisdom no more in Edom? Is counsel perish from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? That's why we see them doing this sort of behavior. That's why we see them homeless all over the place. I seen the Edomite at the gas station. He couldn't even walk upright. He was sort of walking hunched over like a monkey. The Lord is making their wisdom. <clears throat> the Lord is making their wisdom vanished. And look at look at sloppy Joe Biden. He sleep everywhere he go. He be walking up the stairs and he falls. The Lord is making their wisdom vanish on all levels. Whether you're the president or you some white trash in the street, their wisdom is vanishing. That's why they homeless all over the place. And us who work jobs, we see the white people is the laziest co-workers the most of the time. They the one who be barely making it on a job, but they never get fired. So again, is wisdom no more in teaming? <clears throat> is wisdom no more in the Edomites, in the white race? Is counsel perish from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Yeah, because the Lord is zapping them by their wisdom. And the Lord did this before, back in the ancient world, because you had the Roman Empire, who was a dominant power in the earth. You know, you could sort of say that they ruled the world. And the Lord took the Roman Empire and he turned them to cavemen. Because when we took down the Roman Empire, we ran them up in the mountains. Because the Roman Empire, they had a functioning system an education system, a system of government. They had their own language. And the Lord made their wisdom vanish and he made them revert to animals. That's why they was cavemen in the caves during the dark ages. 
because the Lord made their wisdom vanish. <clears throat> we can get more of that right here in Job 12 and 24. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. They grope in dark without light, and he maketh them stagger like a drunken man. Yeah, when it says he taketh away the heart of the chief of the people, he's talking about the mind. Sometimes your heart can be compared to as your mind. That's why the Lord says sometimes he knows your heart. It's really him saying he knows your mind. So the Lord can take away the mind of the chief of the people of the earth. The chief of the people would be the rulers, the people who in first place in terms of power and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Now, this was first seen with Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. He started drinking out the golden vessels of the Lord's temple. So the Lord cast him out of his own kingdom. He made him grow hair like a hairy animal and he made him walk on all fours and he made him eat grass and trees like the animals that was the lord taking away the taking away the heart taking away the mind of the chief of the people the first one being nebuchadnezzar because the lord made him revert to a animal you know and made him live among the animals and eat with the animals because he got so full of pride till he went as far as drinking out of the lord's golden vessels and that's why it says it causes them to wander in the wilderness but there is no way because Nebuchadnezzar was forced to live in the wilderness with the animals for so many years. And that was for the Lord to humble him. And after the Lord humbled him, Nebuchadnezzar was given back his kingdom. And as we continue, they grope in dark without light. That's Esau living in the caves <clears throat> because in the caves, there's no light. And as we continue, he maketh them stagger like a drunken man. And that's why I told you, like the Edomite that I seen naked on the highway, he was like sort of walking like a zombie, sort of limping, but still trying to run. That's the Lord taking their wisdom, taking their wisdom away, making them vanish. Because most animals can't walk upright like humans. If they walk upright, they're going to sort of stagger and sort of limp. And that's what the Lord is doing to these Edomites. And I got a video I'm going to play right here. While we continue with the scriptures. Now in this video here, you see this this Shedamite, she's running like a horse, like a wild dog. This is them in their natural habitat. This is them being made an astonishment in the world. Because the Lord is taking their wisdom and making them revert to an animal. And there was one more verse that I had. It seemed to disappear. So Obadiah chapter 1 verse 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. Yeah, because the white man Esau, he's the people of the earth that dwell in the cliffs of the rock. And in fact, the word Caucasian means cave dweller. Caucasian means, means cave dweller. Then when we go back up, this is concerning Edom. So one thing about Edom. The pride of thy heart has deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So yeah, the Lord is going to bring these Edomites down to the ground. He's going to bring them down to the ground physically by making them revert back to that of a wild animal, like a caveman, by making a wisdom vanish. Then he's also going to bring them to the ground spiritually, because right now, Esau, Edom, the white man, he has rulership of the earth. But the Lord is going to take them out of rulership and put them at the bottom. Like the Negro is at the bottom of society in terms of power here in the earth. Esau will be at the bottom. So that's going to be the Lord bringing them down to the ground. But that's it for this lesson here. We just wanted to show that the Lord is taking these curses and putting them on our enemies. He's humiliating these Edomites before the eyes of the people. <clears throat> and this is this is a sign that they're falling out of power. You got Edomites everywhere bugging out, homeless, walking naked, 
acting like animals. So this is the beginning of the of they this is the beginning of the of they fall. So this is it. Until next time, Shalom.